So here we are in the middle of Venice. We're in the most famous spot and it's St. Mark's Square. You can hear the bells of the church that's behind me. I'll show you that. You can see how big St. Mark's Square is all around and the bells are there in the background. Beautiful. And uh, it's an overcast day, so it's not too hot. It was very humid. They say it's going to be about 28 today. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, it's kind of cool now. It's only about 10.30. We're about to get on a gondola. Well, I'm not. The others are, and we hopefully uh, don't see anyone fall off. But if they do, I'll be there. I'll be there to get the shots. Don't you worry. We'll talk to you then. Venice, the capital of northern Italy's Venato region, is built on more than a hundred small islands. It's on a lagoon on the Adriatic Sea. It has no roads, just canals including the Grand Canal Thoroughfare, which is lined with Renaissance and Gothic palaces. The central square, Piazza San Marco, or we know it as St. Mark's Square, contains St. Mark's Basilica. And that was where I was a minute ago, when the bells were ringing. From the beginning, the weight of the city pushed down on the dirt and mud, squeezing out water and compacting the soil. This phenomenon, together with the natural movement of high tides called aqua alta, caused periodic flooding in the city, creating a sinking sensation. Oh, look, Madonna's left her bra in Venice. Yes, well, I've done my research and at the moment, the population of the people in Venice is over 280,000. And 15% of those are under 18. So, if all the people behind me are visitors, where are the locals? So if you're in the middle of Venice and you're going to meet someone in half an hour, you better leave in an hour and a half because there's so many people here and, uh, and everyone gets lost. Even me. Well, uh, we're going to meet the guys to go on the gondola. So I'm going to go up a little bit early so I'm not late and I'm not last and um, you can see how busy this place is the people I don't know where they've come from there's only one ship in town and uh, the others well they've come from everywhere but the gondolas over there take you for a ride and just have a look So if you're in the middle of Venice and you're going to meet someone in half an hour, you better leave in an hour and a half because there's so many people here and, uh, and everyone gets lost. Even me. Well, uh, we're going to meet the guys to go on the gondola. So I'm going to go up a little bit early so I'm not late and I'm not last. And... Um, you can see how busy this place is. The people, I don't know where they've come from. There's only one ship in town. And uh, the others, well, they've come from everywhere. But the gondolas over there take you for a ride and just have a look. And I think everyone wants to get on a gondola. So, we'll see how they go. And I can see the group ahead. There they are, through all the thousands of people. We'll just turn. There they are. They're all waiting. They're all waiting for their big ride and we're going to see who falls off. I'm going to capture it all on film. So in the next episode, 
be seeing ya. It's in the water. Doesn't matter. <laughs> and we're all in search of um, Susanna. She's over there, and we're over here. Because we were told to come here, that's correct. But I'm gonna. Oh, I think the flower pod, or whatever you call it, flower stick, is coming our way. No. Let me show you. We're gonna take you to her. I'm gonna take you there now. Where, where is she? There she is. There she is. And the others are over there, right. So the others are over there saying that they were going to meet over there. But oh, you're. Um, it's 11.03 in Miss uh, Bossy Boots. <laughs> Miss Bossy That's Boots. That's not me. <laughs> and I believe it was this pillar. Oh, okay. So I'll, go, I'll go and tell them, shall I? Give them the. Oh, All right. But we're probably going to go over there yeah. to get the gondola. So it might be a good idea. It's also confusing. I don't know. And it's me you're talking to. It's got to be simple. You know, She's on a phone. Have a look. Have a look. There she is. Very colourful today. See the little koala we put up there? That's our. That's our. Symbol. Oh, look at it. It's got its own one. I have my flower. So this is where we wait for the gondola ride um, in this little laneway and I'm just realising I'm maybe the only one not going. Oh well, someone has to stay on land. I don't know why that is, but um, oh, it just sounds good, doesn't it? The best known form of transport here in Venice, of course, is the gondola. Today there are only several few hundred of these boats left and they have long been outnumbered by other vessels. But their elegant slick shape and gleaming black paint has made them a symbol of Venice. Many riders have described the romance of Venice by a gondola and loads of tourists are still willing to pay high prices to be taken at twilight through the canals to the singing of the gondola. And our friends here, bye! Oh dear, they're about to be serenaded on the canal, unfortunately, in the rain. A number of gondolas still service ferries along the Grand Canal. But the cost of the maintenance makes their ultimate disappearance certainly likely. Now, there's some more getting on and they're smiling and they're laughing, but I'm laughing more because I reckon they're the ones going to end up in the water. Well here you can see the famous Rialto Bridge, one of the many bridges in Venice. The others are the Scalzi Bridge, which is at the railway station, 
Academia Bridge, as well as the newest bridge called Construction Bridge. I guess that's because it's just been constructed. Here in Venice, over 200 canals have been linked together to form a dense urban network on either side of the curbing Grand Canal, which you see right here. This is like a great backward S. More than two miles long from the railway station to St. Marco Basin. Its width varies from about 100 to 225 feet, or for us people, 30 to 70 meters. It's lined by buildings which were once great palaces of the great merchant families and the public warehouses, or as they call them, fondasi, used for foreign trade. I'm not sure if you remember when I was in Amsterdam, I was having lunch and it poured down rain. Well, here I am in, uh, in Venice and I'm sitting down for lunch and it's pouring rain. And I always happen to be on the table on the corner for some reason. So my, uh, my, my back gets wet. Um, but it's alright, here's my dinner now. It's my lunch now. Thank you. Today we're visiting Burano Island. This is an island in the Venetian Lagoon, northern Italy, uh, near Tucello. It's at the northern end of the lagoon and it's known for its lacework and brightly coloured homes. And its primary economy is, guess what, tourism. Picturesque Burano is known for its fishermen's houses and its casual eateries serving seafood from the lagoon. The museum has exhibits of the development of lace making, which the shops sell here, in things like linens and cloths. Now, if somebody here wants to paint their own house, an official request has to be sent to the municipality and then they will consider and the colours will be approved as part of the island. Also here, we tried out the butter cookie, or at least Lindley did. It's uh, known as the, I think, the Busalai, or the locals at least call it the Baronelli or Burinelli. Oh, we're not very good at this Italian. Good on you, Lindley, go for it. Chuck it in the wine, down the hatch. Apparently that's tradition as well. We love tradition. Well, that was our visit to Burano Island. And with all this fruit and food and wine, oh, I think I need a rest.